Those on the other side have literally nothing other to peddle than hysteria and misinformation and fear uh, about the light touch approach that we had for the most of the Internet's existence. So I would hope, hope that people would focus on the facts. But again, given what's uh, transpired over the last several weeks, I'm not surprised at all. All right, that was FCC Chairman Ajit Pai taking advantage of the 3-2 Republican majority now to end the net neutrality. Uh, is the impact really as drastic as some of these uh, media reports claim? Former FCC Commissioner Robert Woodall says consumers are not at risk or the uh, Internet itself being destroyed, as some of these papers seem to indicate, especially in covered stories like the one you just saw on the Daily News. Um, Robert, I, I do remember the Internet alive and well and thriving up to 2015 when, when net neutrality came into being. And I do remember that since it did come into being, all the big boys started cutting back on infrastructure expansion and the like. It was building and increasing every year. Since then, it's been going down. Why was that? Well, that's be and first of all, thanks for having me back. Very it's good great to, to be you. back on your show. Uh, but you're absolutely right. So this Title II, this Communications Act of 1934 component called Title II, uh, brings with it about a thousand different uh, legal requirements, economic regulation primarily. And every independent Wall Street analyst I've talked to, Marcy Riveker at Wells Fargo, Craig Moffat at Moffat Nathanson, and many others, and they have no dog in the fight. They're just analyzing. I uh, have said that that sort of sword of Damocles of economic regulation over broadband providers did curtail investment. And if you look at wireless broadband, which is the fastest growing segment of the broadband market, if you look at just that in the past two years since that order, uh, investment there, CapEx has declined about 17, almost 18 uh, percent. And that's significant as we try to jump to the next generation of uh, 5G wireless But is this technology. the reason why we're, I mean, that's what's yeah. been argued, that this was the reason. But I always yep. think, I mean, the, the, the consumer argument has been, well, now the government can't shield us from these guys trying to gouge us. You say what? Yeah. And that's not true. And that's a big myth out there that makes for great, great uh, clickbait. But you have three other very strong federal statutes that are in place here. One that's being put back on the beat, the Federal Trade Commission Act puts the Federal Trade Commission back on the beat. You have in other words, the, the FTC Act. then would rule this type of activity as illegal Correct. and you try it, you're in big trouble, right? Right. The Federal Communications Commission kicked the FTC, Federal Trade Commission, off the beat in 2015. Right. Now the FTC is back on the beat, uh, plus the DOJ with the Clayton Act and the Sherman Act. So all of the parade of horribles, every component that's mentioned would be illegal. The blocking, the throttling, the favoritism of content, all of that would be illegal under a variety of statutes uh, that we could cite if you want me to, but uh, under but the again, existing the, the, law. I guess the proponents of the old way of doing things, Robert, have said, uh, you have to go through hoops to, to sort of prove that case. Let's say you're trying to stream a service that isn't yeah. available because the company that you use for your Internet service doesn't own it or have a business relationship with it. And mysteriously, that is getting slowed coming to you if it's coming to you at all. What are the dangers of that? How do you act on that if you see it? Right. So, and that's uh, one of their common arguments, right. which is it didn't happen. There was no systemic market failure before February 2015 when Title II was imposed. So, as you pointed out in the lead, so let's look back at what worked. What was the regulatory legal framework that worked, and why? You know, so some say it's expensive for an entrepreneur or startup to bring a, a lawsuit. They don't have to. The Federal Trade Commission, as the chair, Maureen Olhausen, has said. Uh, has 640 lawyers and 70 PhD economists and over $300 million, and they look for things like this in very complex corners of our economy. Uh, so that's number one. Uh, number two, DOJ does the same, as we're seeing in a big lawsuit right now that's kind of related to this in a way. So uh, there, is a, there are a lot of cops in the beat, and that's why it worked so well. It was Clinton-Gore administration policy, actually, that when I was a commissioner serving with the GPI, that uh, we were defending, uh, which was light touch regulatory framework and we defended it because it worked it gave us the wonderful internet ecosphere that we enjoy today and title two actually was a stark departure from that uh, unanimous so what happens now consensus. i mean these death knell stories and that it's the end of the internet as we know it i know there's a lot of hyperbole there and this is the way yep. it's typically handled in the press you know but uh, what do you think happens now I think actually you're going to see a great explosion of entrepreneurial brilliance. We need to spend about $300 billion over the next decade just on the next generation of wireless, which will be faster than your cable speeds are now. So cable's obviously very concerned. But you're going to see that unleashed uh, in a more robust, full-throated way rather than in a tentative way. And that means we're going to get our mobile future faster. Uh, you're going to see the uh, you know, HD movies downloaded to your, your mobile devices more quickly. You're going to see more choices. Uh, the average American consumer, or actually nine out of ten American consumers, have a choice of four mobile broadband providers. 
uh, and there's unlicensed spectrum as well, which helps uh, to remain a competitive threat against the big carriers, right? Mm -hmm. So prices are falling, innovation is increasing, uh, content is increasing, we're seeing more and more happens. companies produce content, yeah. and it's going to be exciting, it's going to be good.